Hello, this is Rock Hard Caucus. My name is Justin. I'm here with Evan. We're backstage at the uh, Des Moines International Airport. We just, just got done with the first ever Rock Hard Caucus live performance. Opening up for our, our good friend Donald John Trump. Your president and mine. No masks here. Everybody's just spitting off the stage into the big crowd. We're all just having a, a wonderful time. And we figured we'd record a podcast, you know, while we're off. We're on like kind of a adrenaline high, you know, after our the big crowds cheered us on. And it's podcast time, you know. And we've got a real special guest lined up today. Our first ever candidate for elected office here on Rock Hard Caucus. We've got Jalen Cavill with us. What up? Good to be here. The sheriff. Soon to be. Howdy. Howdy, partners. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen, thanks for joining us tonight. I'm real excited because I've been a big fan of your tweets for several months now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I try to go hard on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you've locked up my vote as well as my mother's. So that's, a, I think, a poor I'm honored. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is the funny thing that I'm hearing from a lot of people. Is, is that they're not only are they going to write me in, but they're people are convincing their parents and stuff to write me in. So, yeah, <laughs> my numbers are growing exponentially. <laughs> yeah, well, like someone else said on Twitter, it's the only vote really I don't regret on the uh, whole ballot. So, <laughs> yeah, so let's get into your campaign. You're you're running a write-in campaign for Polk County Sheriff. So your name does not appear printed on the ballot. You're asking for people to write your name. Uh, are you making sure everyone knows how to spell your name? Yep. Yeah, no, that is that is correct. It's a write in campaign. Uh, did not make it on the ballot, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Um, well, I didn't try to. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, definitely. Is, you make a good point. It is really important that folks spell my name correctly. Um, so I'll just say it here. It's J-A-Y-L-E-N. Um, last name C-A-V-I-L. It's Jalen Cavill. Some people mm-hmm. want to put an I in or something. Yeah, it's Jalen Cavill is the way it's supposed to be spelled, you know, if you think about it. But <laughs> yeah, I did actually have someone tell me today that they uh, they commented on my Facebook and said, oh, I, I just spelled your name wrong on my ballot on accident. And I was like, man, you, we're <laughs> friends on Facebook, like you have the resources. <laughs> like, that could be the one vote, too. You may be, you may lose out I, just for that it, one misspelling. It's looking close. It really is. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's not, it's not looking close. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, when I, when I first uh, started this whole campaign was, it was like the middle of the summer. Can't remember exactly what date it was um, when I first kind of uttered the words, I'm going to run for Polk County Sheriff. But uh, mm-hmm. it, I do remember we were at the Polk County Courthouse. It was, um, we were there for a, uh, a rally, um, a protest in support of our, our comrade Vit Tran, who was being unjustly uh, held without bond. They held him in Polk County Jail for two weeks um, on some trumped up crazy charges. Uh, Bullshit. Yeah. You can say bullshit. Okay, I can cuss on here. Cool. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, they charged this dude with, with, they charged him with uh, like a felony espionage charge. Oh, that's Um, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's complete bullshit. It actually, yeah, made national news, international news. Um, It was on, on Vietnam news, actually. But uh, yeah, so, some complete bullshit. The, that whole story was was bullshit. Just another example of the way that the Des Moines Police Department has been, you know, trumping up and, and attacking us this entire summer and making us out to be these like huge, you know, violent, violent criminal gang when we're really just, you know, some young people who are out here protesting for justice. Mm-hmm. And the police are doing violence. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly and yeah the the whole thing with vit was was insane when when you think about it like the cops had printed out pieces of paper of all of our faces on them that they had taken from like kcci footage of previous protests so they had like screen grabbed our faces and printed them out and put it on put them on pieces of paper and then pass, pass those out to all the cops when they're at the capitol one day when we were protesting and then we're like trying to use those papers to identify people and grab them out of the crowd and, and arrest them mm-hmm. um and you know if, if you've been following with des moines protest that day was a pretty wild day at the capitol i want to say july 1st um when kind of all hell broke loose and the cops you know instigated and, and decided they wanted to start a riot you know early in the morning at the capitol um which you know then led to an unjust capital ban that we're fighting yeah. in the court right now acl you just picked it up didn't they like yep 
yeah, the ACLU uh, filed a lawsuit for us last week. But yeah, I'm kind of going off on a tangent here, but the espionage charges came out of the fact that he had, you know, allegedly picked up a piece of paper from the ground that the cops had, you know, dropped and showed it to a journalist as one would. I mean, I know yeah. I would do the same if I just picked mm-hmm. up a paper that had, you know, pictures of my friends on it that the police <laughs> yeah. officers had just dropped. But like, yo, yeah. check out what the cops are doing. Like, look at this. Um, and then, you know, Eva Anderson, the Channel 5 news reporter, decided to run that on the news um they which, disseminated uh, it. <laughs> you know? it, it that's the whole thing right channel five is the one who disseminated the information technically Vit didn't post it anywhere he didn't have um some kind of huge platform to to disseminate this information which he does now thanks to now the he does yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but yeah so um they decided to charge him with a, a leaking charge it was a, an espionage charge it was a felony something that had only been used the charge had only been used once in the state of iowa previously and it was used to charge a police officer who had leaked the department's own intelligence so you know just complete bullshit they had locked mm-hmm. him up um and and you know usually when we we're used to getting arrested for protesting here the cops have arrested you know over 200 people since the summer started they've arrested some of us multiple times um we have a system we have a bail bond a, a bail fund that you know bails us out so usually when we get arrested we're out the same day um you know it mm-hmm. might be in there for eight ten hours but we're gonna get out the same day vit had that expectation i actually got arrested the same day as vit um on a, a completely unrelated charge and so we were in polk county jail together yeah and so he we were talking and he was like yeah we're gonna get bailed out like we're about to be out of here and then i got bailed out and he found out he had to stay um and then it wasn't two weeks later till he got out so Jeez. we were pro- yeah we were protesting at the courthouse um because he had a bond hearing and we were like yo like free our dude make get him out right now we had a, like a noise demonstration and the polk county sheriff's officers who were there because they work at the at the courthouse were you know antagonizing us the whole time um first we we're out standing on the sidewalk they told us we weren't allowed to be on the sidewalk um which you know was weird and and then folks were like drawing sidewalk chalk which then they told us that if we continued drawing sidewalk chalk they were going to tear gas us um <laughs> Yeah, or they said a uh, use of use of chemical irritants may be used to disperse the crowd. Um, so yeah, just a bunch of bullshit. They were talking shit to us, and so I was like, "Fuck these guys! Like, fuck all the sheriff's officers here! Fuck the MPD! Like, I'm about to run for Polk County Sheriff, and I'm gonna beat all their bosses, um, and I'm gonna tell them <laughs> what to do." And it was that's like how I kind of first said it, like as a joke. And then, like, literally the next day, someone had printed off a bunch of buttons, like campaign buttons that said, like, nice. Cabal for Sheriff. Someone had made, like, a sign that they posted on Twitter. And I was like, okay, uh, people people seem to be into this. Um, <laughs> and then <laughs> kind of didn't do much with it, uh, you know, kind of just joked around still from from there. And then it was the, the first day early voting started. So last week, right, last Monday, the first mm-hmm. day that early voting started and here in Iowa, I just made a post on Twitter just saying, Hey, uh, today's the first day of early voting. I'm humbly asking for you to write me in for Polk County Sheriff um, with a little picture of the button and then a homemade uh, write-in, which I was criticized for because they said I drew the bubble in wrong. Um, <laughs> and uh, my platform, which included um, you know, decriminalizing all drugs in Polk County. Um, it included ending cash bail, which we know is classist and racist. Mm-hmm, it mm-hmm. included ending all collaboration with ICE and also defunding the Polk County Sheriff's Department and, and reallocating those resources to community services like, you know, mental health services and drug rehabilitation services. And yeah, and ever since then, uh, since I made that post on Twitter, it kind of exploded. Um, you know, people have really been running with this. There's a lot of enthusiasm, it seems like, behind the campaign. Um, I personally really felt like I haven't, like, as someone who's running for office, haven't had to do a, a ton of work because people are just like, yo, crazy, I made yeah. this graphic today and, like, yeah. send it to me. I'm like, all right, thanks. And it's people, grassroots, like, baby. Videos. Yeah, yeah. And that's what I'm saying. The, the complete grassroots campaign. I'm not taking any money. I don't want to deal with FEC bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Just. <laughs> well, like you said, you actually, you have a platform, like, that I can get behind <laughs> and, like, it's funny they always portray it as like there is no platform it's just like a bunch of just like criminals is what they want to say but it's like there's very concrete demands being made and it's just being Mm -hmm. ignored and and distorted exactly we talk about paul parisic (laughs) my favorite subject i mean (laughs) there is just that shit just came out yeah 
Go ahead. Yeah, Paul, Paul Parizic is is a piece of work. I'll tell you what. It's funny because I I actually haven't gotten the chance yet to listen to Ask Five O anything, which sometimes I'll, I'll listen. See, to this is how I know of him, and I already knew he was like smarmy and like I, I didn't know how bad. Like I'm pretty new to Des Moines. I originally from Cedar Rapids, so I didn't know the extent. And I have experience with the Des Moines or the Cedar Rapids police, but and they're shitty as hell too. But like Des Moines is like another level. Like just yeah. the way it's been going. Paul's a, a different kind of different kind of guy. I honestly don't I don't understand how he can still be in the role he's in right now. I really don't believe that he, he could be viewed as effective from the police department side <laughs> just because of all the shit that has transpired and how much he's been exposed. But yeah, he he has his morning uh, radio show every Tuesday, or his wife has a radio show that he is a guest on on Tuesday morning, right. plus five oh anything, yeah. which is really dumb. It's people calling <laughs> in because they want to talk to a cop. And a lot of times it's usually just like bootlickers who are um, kissing Paul's ass and Mm -hmm. like want to crack jokes and uh, ask him like a question about, you know, having a bonfire in their yard or like the the speed limit on the highway or something like that. Um, But it is funny because recently listening to Paul's show, it's like we are providing all of the content for his show. (laughs) It's it's pretty funny. I listened to his show last week and like 20 minutes of, of his segment was just like, talking about my tweets and, damn <laughs> um, it was pretty he's boosting funny. the campaign yeah yeah he's um cause, so i guess if folks don't know paul Prezik is the public information officer for the Des Moines police department he's like the most public face of the Des Moines police department um the Des Moines police department is an evil dangerous gang and he's the face of it so you mm-hmm. know automatically he is going to you know be viewed as a terrible person in my eyes which he, mm-hmm. he is. Um, he's lived out to that. Yeah, even personally. <laughs> yeah. <seems. laughs> I just think it's yeah. interesting. He is such a squeaky clean. Like he said, the radio show like does so much to launder his image. And like he's got, you know, they have all the hangout with like the sports fans. Like they go to like the bait shop or whatever and all that shit. And like the exact opposite. Like, I don't know. I've thought about calling in. I used to listen to that shit, but I haven't since the pandemic. And like... <laughs> Just to like, hey, listen, you know, started to call in and and, like talk shit, which is funny. Um, (laughs) People have kind of started to pick up on it and started to call in and like be combative with him. Well, he said a whole bunch of shit with like his son came out and said a bunch of shit about him. That was pretty, you know, and like this whole shit with like him withholding the body camera um, from them, like tasering a guy who they said was like agitated and shit, but like clearly was not. And they just did not provide the you know he's like gonna have to pay a bunch of shit well it's gonna come out of the fucking police yeah, fund was, i'm sure it's not even like pay a bunch it was like a hundred dollar fine um and then i guess they <laughs> have to they have to work on paying the, the legal fees which right he's not gonna, he's not gonna be the one it's gonna uh, be the police the, the taxpayers of des moines are gonna yeah. pay for that that's bullshit mm-hmm. and yeah so so that video came out today which you know i do want to give shout out to aaron calvin who first reported on that um absolutely a reporter for the iowa informer mm-hmm. and he uh regularly scoops the Des Moines Register and then they just kind of rerun what he writes. So that happened <laughs> yep. again because he broke yep. the story a few days ago. Um, and then the Des Moines Register just kind of repackaged it. And But they did release the video. The Des Moines Register put, uh, included the video in their article today, which was behind a paywall conveniently. Because right. um, right. you know. I, I, I do pay for a Register subscription because I'm just a, a good, you know, moral standing guy. Yeah, um, democracy which, dies in darkness, <laughs> though. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I have a journalism degree, so. Um, oh, cool. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I pay for my Register subscription. So I was, like, sending the link out to everybody, like, watch this video. And everyone was like, yo, it's behind a paywall. Like, I can't watch this. And I was like, wow, this video is so important. So I was like fuck the register and then i just like screen recorded the whole video and post on yeah. twitter i was like we need good, this good. To video out. <laughs> um, which i regularly do to the register anytime they oh, like God. i just want to democratize the content they're putting out mm-hmm. but yeah it was a really fucked up video it showed a it was like a i believe a 22 year old black man um who was just sitting at the uh, the market the farmer's market sitting there apparently uh you know people had called the cops because they said he was talking to himself they thought he was mm-hmm. having some kind of mental health problem um, and, and the video just kind of starts of where the cops, it's two cops walking up to him um, and telling him, get up and, and trying to pull him up uh, immediately as soon as they walk up. Like, you know, clearly if if they did that to me, I'd be like, what the fuck's going on? Like, why? Mm-hmm. What, what, I'm just sitting here. What, what's going on? So, you know, obviously he's trying to question what's going on and the cops um, throw him down to the ground, tase him uh, multiple times. They, they pepper spray him. There's people in the crowd watching saying like, stop yelling at the cops, yeah. telling them to stop tasing him. 
I mean, yeah, this happened in the in 2018, uh, two years ago. Um, you know, there was multiple freedom of information requests, uh, open records requests sent to the police department trying to get them to release the footage of this, and they did not release the footage, which a judge just found that Paul Prezik violated the law by doing this, and they said if he does gets charged with this a second time, a judge can order that he's removed from his position as uh, the public information officer, which I think that should just be, uh, just, that should just happen right now, automatically. Of course. After all this yeah. shit well, he has out, a I'm, record beyond that, like lying to the media. That's what I've been trying to trying to tell. So I, I started this whole anti-Paul Parizic thing right at the beginning of the summer because I had seen right from when the protest started how much he would just get on every, he would get on every single news camera and just lie. Just yeah. lie out, out of the side of his ass um just make up shit and then the news just runs it yeah they don't try to ask for a a comment from someone else they don't try to like look into any of these claims that he's making that actually could be looked into they just run it as fact and and to me that's complete bullshit that's not journalists doing their job you know paul prezik is a government official the job of a journalist is supposed to you know be serving as the fourth estate you're supposed to be challenging the government you know and and when you just take what the government says or the police department which you know should be even less trusted than just a normal government official i think and you just take what they say and just run it as fact like that's doing a complete disservice to the community that you're supposed to be serving um paul paul parizic is unfit um for the office that he's holding right now he is a, a known liar um he's been accused of child abuse by his own son. Um, he's also a known drunk. Uh, I have witnessed him being drunk at a bar in, in Des Moines, um, getting some white claws to go. Um, you know, to, <laughs> I think I talked about that video on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, Paul Prezik loves his white power claws. <laughs> did you uh, break the picture of Dana Winger at the Trump rally? I did. See, I'm a journalist, honestly. Yeah, because so. <laughs> I, I think I retweeted that. Yeah, that's fucked. Man, and like it was definitely it was like hidden on his like wife's page or something, right? <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, he, he would be smart enough to not, right? No, I, that's what I'd be telling the journalists at the register. I'm like, I scoop you guys all the time. Um, <laughs> but the 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 way I found that picture was just because I was scrolling on on Facebook um, and was actually looking at a post from my favorite Des Moines City Councilwoman Linda Westergaard. Who has who endorsed, endorsed my you. campaign? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and you know she had made a post about supporting the police and talking about you know the protests and how she stands with the police and she doesn't like the lawlessness, all you know the bullshit stuff that Democrats and Republicans are saying. Um, yeah, but I had seen Dana Winger. Uh, or not Dana Winger, sorry, uh, Dana Winger's wife. I don't even remember her name because I don't know who this, this lady is, honestly. She commented on the post and was like, thank you so much, Linda, for standing with the Wood Police Department. Like, me and my husband are, like, so grateful. And I was did like, we oh, say shit. he's the chief of police? I don't know if we did. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, he's the Des Moines chief of police. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's the Des Moines chief of police. Dana Winger is his name. And this was – I just seen that she had the last name Winger. So I was like, okay, this is – interesting i clicked on her profile and her profile picture is a picture of her and dana wingert the chief of police of des moines at the trump rally not you know dana wasn't dressed up in his cop clothes like serving on (laughs) serving like wasn't there for work he was there in normal clothes with his wife both attending they had like the little trump lanyards on um you know they had pretty good seats it looked like oh yeah and so i'm like wow this is this is interesting because when you really start to think about it like We had already known that Dana Wingard was like a a Republican. We just didn't really have the evidence like that to back it up. Um, But when you see the picture of them at the the Trump rally, they're like, wow, he is a Trump supporter. And then I did more digging after that and did find out that he has voted for Donald. He he voted Republican in 2016, like he voted for Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, he's a Trump supporter. He went to the rally, um, attended as a fan with his wife. Um, She made it her profile picture. So clearly, you know, she's proud that she got to attend such a great rally where also uh, the Kenosha shooter was at. Oh, shit. Yes. (laughs) That's yeah, right. It was the Drake one. Yeah. God damn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. They were sharing space. Dana Winger and the Kenosha shooter. Damn. But yeah, also like I just want one of the other reasons I really wanted to post that besides just like exposing him as like a, a racist, which we already knew was like mm-hmm. to get people to think about like the fact that throughout the from the beginning of these protests, Donald Trump has been like 
law and order. These police departments need to go so much harder than they're going. They need to not accept this. Like, don't let these people be in the streets. They're thugs. They're Antifa. Donald Trump has been promoting the violence from the police department. He wants the police department to be more violent. He wants the police department to suppress the people who are taking to the streets, right? And Dana Winger supports Donald Trump. You know, you would think mm-hmm. that what Donald Trump says probably resonates a little bit with Dana. Dana probably takes what Donald Trump says, um, you know, he, he, he considers it and, and probably agrees with it or, or lets it lets his, his viewpoints find a way to align with it, as most Trump voters do. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's making that connection because it and even when you look back at the receipts, like it was like May 29th was when Donald Trump made that big like the, the what was the tweet that he made that like made Twitter freak out in everyone oh uh, when the looting starts the shooting starts and oh all, yeah all oh. that shit. yeah and yeah. and it was the and it was the next night that was like probably the most violent night from the des moines police department where they were just unloaded yeah. with tear gas and rubber bullets and and pepper spray on, on people who were non-violently protesting you know we weren't looting we weren't doing property damage um for the most part but <laughs> yeah like it's it's pretty fucked up when you're and when you're when you're living in Des Moines, which is supposed to be a democratic city, right? I mean, as 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 real as you want to take that, right? As as much weight as you want to put into having democratic elected officials, which I don't really put a ton of weight <laughs> into that. But mm-hmm. Still, that should not be accepted in in this city. If if every person sitting on the city council is a Democrat, including the mayor, um, they should not they should not be accepting what's going on right now in this city with the Des Moines Police Department. They should. They should take a stand, and none of them have. the The only person who has even come close is Josh Mandelbaum, and he, because of a tweet that he made that wasn't even, <laughs> it was the tweet was was not even aggressive or anything like that. He got a a letter mailed to him by the Des Moines Police Union, like threatening him. Yeah, it's it's mob tactics over here in Des Moines. Mm-hmm. It really mm-hmm. is. Well, speaking of elected Democrats, I've got a sample ballot here from Polk County. I'm um, looking at the county sheriff, and there's. There's a Democrat and a Republican uh, running for this this seat that you are also running for, Jalen. Yeah, Democrat. (laughs) I mean, yeah, like yeah. Uh, Kevin Schneider is the uh, incumbent Polk County Sheriff, correct? He is. Says here he's a Democrat. Never actually been elected though. Oh, okay. So so McCarthy was the sheriff, and he retired and just gave the seat to Schneider. So this is the first time Schneider is actually running for election. Okay, so that's a weakness. So you could exploit that. It is. He doesn't have as much of the incumbent advantage, you would say, because yeah, <laughs> his first time being on the ballot. <laughs> but yeah, he's a Democrat. He is a Democrat. Yeah. So, do you think that 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 matters having a Democrat as the Polk County Sheriff? Uh, I mean, not this Democrat. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Democrats and Republicans are pretty much both extremely pro police and do not even try to hide it whatsoever. Yeah. Like Cindy Axney is an elected representative, and you know. Her debate performance last night. I didn't watch that debate, but I I, I saw, saw that some part tweets. Of it. Yeah, yeah, we can we can have a whole other segment on Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, yeah. Um, he's a registered Democrat. Um, to me, you know, I don't think it matters too much, especially when you think about sheriff. Because like, if you're running for sheriff, seriously, like if you're actually running for sheriff, like you're a cop. So mm-hmm. like, fuck you. So you know, at the end of the day, like I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican, you're a cop. But yeah, he's he's supported. That's the thing also about my run, which, you know, is something I like, is that I'm trying to challenge like the Polk County Democrats because the Polk County Democrats support Kevin Schneider heavily, very, very heavily. They, they donate a lot of money to his campaign. They host events for him. They have him speak at every monthly meeting. Um, they're doing like yard sign drives for him. If you're driving around Des Moines, especially on the south side, there's a bunch of Kevin Schneider signs all around here. Um, th- those are provided a lot of times by the Polk County Dems. They love Kevin Schneider. And I'm like, why? Why do y'all love Kevin Schneider so much when Kevin Schneider has been the one who's been overseeing this police department that's been, or the sheriff's office that's been step by step, side by side with the Des Moines Police Department being violent against nonviolent protesters? Mm-hmm. Because, because, you know, DMPD rightfully gets a lot of slack from, from us. I mean, they, they're they evil. Um, they deserve all of the the negative attention that they get. But a lot of times people overlook the fact that standing down there with DMPD in full riot gear, a lot of times providing riot shields to DMPD is the sheriff's department and, and they're, they're partaking in the violence just like DMPD is. And then once we get arrested, we get put in Polk County jail. Kevin Schneider oversees right. Polk County jail. Yeah. The, the COVID hellhole that is Polk County jail. Um, that's, that's where Kevin Schneider is in charge of. So where's the accountability 
from anyone in this city, especially Democrats. I feel like Democrats need to hold Kevin Schneider accountable because he is their candidate. They're out here putting in all the work to elect him. Don't y'all want to make him a better candidate? Um, and that, that's the big problem I have with a lot of the Polk County Democrats is they're all just cheerleaders. Um, they don't really care as long as you have the next to your name, mm-hmm. really w- w- what you're about at all. Um, and, you know, I'd be raising hell in the Polk County Democrats discussion group on Facebook. I don't know if <laughs> you're in there, but it's a good time. I've heard horror stories. <laughs> yeah, they're about to kick me. They're about to kick me, honestly. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. My last post I posted uh, like two days ago has like 200. 200- and 20 comments and like they had to they it got reported so many times that like the moderator had to like get on the comment and like start telling me every rule i was violating i was like all right <laughs> <laughs> but yeah they deleted my post once i i made because that i made that facebook post about uh my candidacy the same one i posted on twitter just saying like i'm humbly asking for your vote this is my platform i posted mm-hmm. that in the Polk county democrats uh discussion group <laughs> And it just got filled with a bunch of comments, like hating on me, like telling me like Kevin Schneider is our candidate. What are you doing? Like, yeah, take this somewhere else. Like, and then eventually it just got deleted. So I was like, all right, thank you for considering my candidacy. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you're you're challenging a Democrat. So that makes you the enemy to them. Yeah. I'm like, y'all, I'm a registered Democrat, technically. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you gotta be to participate in their primaries, which is like, yeah, that's a whole nother thing. Like, does that even work to drag them left, or like, are they just gonna? I mean, Biden. <laughs> we could talk about that. <laughs> it's I. I'm losing a lot of a lot of faith that we're able to drag some of these Iowa Democrats left. It's just it's different here in Iowa with these Democrats. I feel like it's. I mean. Even like if you think about, I think it was Cindy Axney, uh, Dave Lobsack, and Abby Fink and I were all ranked in like the top twenty most conservative Democrats in the House of Representatives. Yeah. I think yeah. Cindy Axney is like top five. What? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like to, that shit is not cool. Uh, and and I think that these Democrats aren't fully grasping the the reality that the people who are up next like the the younger generation the people who are up next that like the party is literally relying on to maintain power like they're they're relying on young people and they're relying on people of color and the shit that they're putting out we're not liking Mm -hmm. and it's only so long that they can keep doing this before like they really start facing some real consequences yeah and that was i read um so a uh, friend of the show, Adam Sullivan, uh, he wrote a <laughs> he wrote a gazette piece on on your write in campaign. And shout uh, out part of <laughs> part of a quote of yours was that um, your campaign also is exciting people who otherwise maybe wouldn't even vote because th- what the Democrats are offering in Polk County is Joe Biden, Teresa Greenfield, and Cindy Axney, at least for the you know federal offices and. I mean, a lot of people that are excited by a write-in campaign for Polk County Sheriff from somebody who wants to decriminalize all drugs and defund the police department maybe wouldn't bother voting for Joe Biden otherwise. Um, I guess my question is, like, should we should we continue trying to influence the Democratic Party? Should we keep voting for what they are offering us? Or should we try to go further with like what you're doing now, like run campaigns to challenge them, like from outside of the party. I mean. No, it's a good question. And it's something that I think I always like struggle with and go back and forth with because I, I mean, you know, my background is I, I did work in like electoral politics. I worked, I worked on city council campaigns, um, a state house campaign, and then I worked on a U.S. Senate campaign. Mm-hmm. And so like, I, I've done like, you know, the political stuff, um, actually like trying to get a Democrat hardcore working 60 hours a week, trying to get a Democrat elected to the office who I didn't agree with half of their platform, you know, like <laughs> who, who I couldn't, you know, who would, I would get in arguments with about like basic, basic shit to me. Um, but, but yeah, so, so, so I, 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 I played that game, I feel like, and then switching gears once like this summer started at the beginning of the summer and I really like you know took to the streets every single day um you know got, got joined in with the one BLM became an organizer and it was just kind of like tear it all down and I, I'm still like tear it all down like, fuck the system yeah. we need to dismantle it um it, it's not working electoral politics will not bring us liberation it will not bring us to where we need to go so so I definitely struggle with the the, the idea of I guess putting a bunch of time and effort into still trying to make electoral politics work, which I find myself doing. Like, I mean, I'm doing it right now, kind of, but not, not really. Yeah. I mean, it's a, 
it's kind of an alternative, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you right. are engaging in an election. Yeah. 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 But I would, I mean, I, I do, I always say that Democrats are a lost cause. Um, but then also I, I think that like in this election, I, I don't know. I, I said I wasn't going to vote for Joe Biden. I still haven't like came out and said I'm going to vote for Joe Biden. I have mm-hmm. not voted yet. Yeah. I mean, I would, I, I was going to vote for Cindy Axne, but she lost my vote. So, you know, there's still time. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a question that I think I don't really have an answer to, honestly, just because I wrestle with it so much. Like, be, because I mean, the alternative, I guess, is just like splitting the Democratic Party and then what? Just getting just losing to just having Republicans run the entire country. Yeah. Like nationally. <laughs> yeah. There's not much hope. I don't think there. at least like, like, if we could get the Republicans to split too. If we get the Republicans to split too, then like, I would be like, fuck. Yeah. Like, yeah, we yeah. Start our own party. there's a lot of organizing around issues and stuff. Like I, I think there's like, there's some slim hope in like, I mean, I think it's good to vote, like, but understand that it's like a bare minimum and that it's like, it's not going to be enough. Like, at this mm-hmm. juncture in history like i, yeah. I was going to say i think that the republicans who are interested in splitting from their party are just taking over the democratic party unfortunately that that, that is a, a good yeah. point yeah the, the democratic party moves to the right every day with the lincoln project bullshit mm-hmm. trying to gobble up all of these republican voters and just ignoring folks on the left who are like what about us you know we're, yeah. we're over here getting ignored by the party that we did claim. Right. And you, you did a bunch of work. Yeah. You've done a bunch of work for them. You'd think that they might feel like they owe you something. <laughs> I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're pushing us to the side because they're, they're, they're placing their bets on these, you know, suburban voters who voted for Trump that are now going to come over to the Democrats, the the white women in the suburbs and mm-hmm. the, yeah. the, what is it? Fiscally conservative, but uh, socially <laughs> folks, you know what I mean? <laughs> like Adam Sullivan. <laughs> Did you know he had a Reagan tattoo before or after you spoke to him? <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know how much you know about Adam. <laughs> hey, he's getting the message out. <laughs> I read something on Twitter that called him like a Republican operative or something like yeah, that. Yeah, he's a libertarian, but he's at least smart enough to be like consistent about like civil rights and like like the vast majority of them publicly. I don't know about privately. I don't know. I have my suspicions. Also, I could tell that by like the people who who follow him on Twitter because like anytime yeah. he'll like tweet about me, I just get like so much hate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot no one likes him. Like he doesn't he doesn't he fits in the libertarian mold where no one on the left side likes him and no one on the right side likes him. <laughs> He's like the never Trump guy. Yeah. Yeah. Like no, we gotta we gotta get rid of all of them. That's the thing. We I I mean I think we have to take it over. We've got to we've got to take over the fucking party and and kick these people out i mean i I was i almost made it to today and then i deleted it but i was i was like (laughs) i was gonna be like we need to abolish uh diane feinstein chuck schumer oh my god Um, diane feinstein (laughs) because she was pissing me off and i was watching the hearing yeah 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 yeah. like giving amy coney barrett compliments right now but yeah like we need to abolish all of these fucking people nancy pelosi chuck schumer diane feinstein uh, just all of these fucking dinosaurs who are have controlled the Democratic Party for forever. Some uh, of the most self gratifying people on earth. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just like insane, and it's like the people in the Democratic Party do the same self gratification thing. It's like, well, I'm not a Trump person; I'm a Democrat, and like they don't have any suspicion about the Trump people who are going to switch over and vote for Biden this time. You know, it's like, is that a good thing? Like, do you want these? Like, they don't care about ideology at all it's just about people mm-hmm. that they can attach their hopes to or they're excited about the potential of uh george w bush endorsement of joe Biden, <laughs> which like if that happens that i'm was, definitely not gonna vote dude <laughs> that, that reminded me of uh the the shit i why i hate the polk county Dems. like should you know you know sean bagnuski the the chair of the polk county democrats yeah yeah i've heard a lot of bad things yeah so i mean so like my friend chelsea one time uh he's he's done a bunch of stupid shit but chelsea chisholm vargas if y'all know her yep she ran for she ran for city council we endorsed her really awesome yeah Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) we had like maybe 10 listeners at the time (laughs) (laughs) yeah so so the polk county dems of course did not support her Mm. even though joe gatto is a racist and um has a framed picture of donald trump hanging up right in the front of his restaurant with him and donald trump (laughs) thumbs up um 
but yeah, so so all that shit. And so like Chelsea had had made a criticism of the Polk County Democrats saying like y'all say you want people of color, you say you want women of color to like be elected into office, but then when they run, we all don't do anything to support them. You do the opposite. You know, you're you're protecting incumbents, um, no matter how racist and terrible that incumbent might be and self-serving. They don't even live in the ward they represent. Um, So she had made a a criticism of him for that. And he, you know, decided to take to Facebook and write this like essay about how he he started off like it's been 35 years and and the day finally came. I was called a racist. Oh, God. <laughs> all of this shit. so so he's yeah he's he's just a whack dude um you know he loves to post about uh good trouble like that doesn't even make sense like he posted a, a picture of like john the john lewis mural and he was like having some good trouble in des moines today I'm like what are you talking about <laughs> um, dude. that's like a democratic fundraiser is good trouble <laughs> right and and so he's the chair of the polk county democrats and when when cindy mccain had endorsed joe biden yeah he made this like long post about I like John McCain has been his hero for his whole life. And like, <laughs> this is amazing to see, to see Cindy McCain endorse Joe Biden. And I was like, bro, you're, you're the chair of the Polk County Democrats. <laughs> and you're talking about your, your life hero is John McCain. This is, this is yeah. everything that's wrong with the democratic party right here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at the very least, like John McCain was the Republican nominee for president 12 years ago. Not that long ago. He's no, but y'all, y'all remember when he did thumbs down? Y'all remember when he did thumbs down? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) And then he died, like, immediately. (laughs) Yeah, that's like the spirit of bipartisanship is just, like, a complete embrace of the status quo. It's like, you can't... It's so ridiculous that the Democrats are still pushing the bipartisanship thing, where it's like, yeah, you're not Trump, but, like, you're, like, supporting all of the same things that make Trump who he is, like... I, f- I feel like it's the same path to the, or it's a different path to the same place is where the Democrats and Republicans are currently leading us. Mm-hmm. So we talked a little bit about Joe Biden. Uh, it seems none of us are particularly excited about him being at the top of the Democratic ticket. Jalen, did you have any other like preference during the uh, presidential primary? Would you have preferred another candidate to Joe Biden? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Anyone <laughs> else? Um, no, but yeah, I was a Bernie guy, to a Bernie bro, some might say. Um, mm-hmm. No, nah. but uh, yeah, yeah, big Bernie supporter. Uh, was a big Bernie supporter in 2016. So naturally, I was very excited when he ran again in 2020. Nice. Yeah, it was, so was all in for Bernie. Did went to so many Bernie events. I, I applied for his campaign a few times. You know, didn't get the job, but it's whatever. Yeah, me too. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. So <laughs> yeah, he, big Bernie guy um that was i was burning your bust honestly like i was so optimistic i would say you know being here in iowa and and just i felt like there was so much support for bernie here um and then the caucus night came oh yeah you said that you had a crazy caucus experience before we were recording i did have a crazy caucus experience that was the that was the first time i went viral <laughs> I've, i haven't gone viral that many times it was like this i'm like getting hit by camera <laughs> But, sure, that's a big one. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised we haven't mentioned that yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm glad now I've moved on from being known as the guy that's been hit by Kim Reynolds' car. <laughs> I'm elevated. <laughs> yeah. Now you're the sheriff to be. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, there was there was some corrupt shit going on in my caucus precinct, man. Precinct Des Moines Precinct 80. Still, the numbers right. are still fucked up to this day. I, I, I really? look. Yeah, even after they did all those changes, they still fucked up the numbers in Des Moines Precinct 80. And it was because of some weird rule that they have where, like, if the caucus precinct chair writes the writes it down on the piece of paper, it can't be changed. And this lady had oh, no clue what the yeah. fuck she was doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was the, the precinct chair. She did not know what she was doing the whole time. She fucked up um, in the in the middle of it because we had, you know, gone to our first alignments. And, you know, you're supposed to count everyone that's in your first alignment and then realign. Um, and right. and the, the people who aren't viable, if you have like, what, less than 15 percent, you're not viable. You have to realign into another group. Mm-hmm. But so she had after after we had divided up into our first group, she decided which groups were not viable. And then she told those people that they could go home if they wanted to or they could realign. And so then a bunch of people left. This was before the first alignment. This was the first alignment, but okay. she did not count how many people were in each group. And then she let people leave. Oh, I see. Yeah. So she already fucked up there. <laughs> and so then we we realign 
do all our stuff. And, and I, uh, we, we stayed for the end. So there was only a handful of people left. It was just the people who were um, signing up to be delegates for each candidate were, were left right. in the room. And I think it there was only three candidates viable in my precinct. It was Bernie, Pete and Biden. And so I, I was naturally a Bernie delegate. Um, like I said, big Bernie guy. So um, we, I stayed afterwards and we were all all in the little huddle at the table with all the delegates and we were doing the math. And so Bernie's group had 101 people in it. And, and Pete Buttigieg's group was the second largest group. It had 66 people in it. Sure. Um, so after she did her, her caucus math on the little thing, she divided it up into how many delegates each person was, was supposed to get. And so she said that um, after she did her math, it was Bernie was supposed was at 4.8 and Pete Buttigieg was at 3.2. Mm-hmm. And first she was like, okay, now they're both going to be tied. Um, Pete Buttigieg rounds up to four, Bernie rounds down to four. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was like, how the fuck does that make sense? <laughs> That's ridiculous. And and I was like, no, that does not make sense. Everyone was like, this does not make sense. She like was like, no, this is what it is. Um, people were like literally about to throw hands in the place. Um, like yeah. the Bernie and Pete delegates were about to throw hands she was was like emphatic that this was the right thing and then she called someone i don't know who she called then she came back to the table and was like okay uh i figured it out so p is actually at three and bernie is at four and for the last delegate we have to flip a coin (laughs) and i said here the fuck we go (laughs) so she flipped we were all like no don't flip the coin like this is wrong round us up to five they're at three like we're at 4.8, round us up to five. Yeah. What the fuck? And she flipped the coin. It goes to Pete, uh, of course. Uh, so Pete and Bernie both ended up being tied at four delegates in my precinct, despite the fact that Bernie had almost 40 more people in his caucus yeah. alignment than Pete did. And then right after she goes, because um, I, I, I I took a video of her flipping the coin, which went viral on Twitter um, and was on like <laughs> I CNN think I probably all- saw that, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it has like 3.4 million views right now on Twitter. Jeez. Um, but uh, <laughs> right after she flips the coin and gives the delegate to Pete, she stole the delegate from Bernie, gave it to Pete. And then she goes, okay, now sign me up as a Pete delegate. <laughs> Just making what? it perfectly clear what's happening. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> she, stole the, she stole it from Bernie, gave it to Pete, and then signed herself up as a Pete delegate. Some corrupt <laughs> shit went down in my pocket precinct. Abolish the Iowa caucuses. Yeah, it needs to happen. I, I don't know how y'all feel about that. You know, you might have to change uh, your podcast name. But <laughs> no, 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 we're in favor of it because it's not democratic in the slightest. Yeah, yeah. We kind of like play a character occasionally where it's like, if you touch the Iowa caucus, we're gonna have words. But really, I mean, it's the caucus is bullshit. Like we spent maybe like the first like twenty episodes of our podcast just like just dealing with how the caucus works and like all the different ways it can go wrong in each precinct and then it was way worse than we even expected (laughs) yeah yeah and mine mine was not the only coin flip there was like four coin flip videos that came out of the iowa caucus night which i mean when you're deciding the president the presidential (laughs) nominee by coin flips yeah it's pretty crazy something definitely stinks with the whole fucking thing like (laughs) That's the first, like, direct evidence I've heard of, like, shady shit, like, benefiting Pete, but, like... No, all the coin flips went to Pete. It was weird. Every coin flip video I saw went to Pete. Yeah, it was a similar thing in the 2016 caucus where an eyebrow-raising number of the coin flips went to Clinton. Like, seemed statistically unlikely for it to go that way. Was this your first uh, election in Iowa, Jalen? Yeah, it was my 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 first Iowa caucus. I had voted mm-hmm. in like the uh, municipal elections before that for mayor and city council here in Des Moines. Everyone who I voted for lost. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's fun. I love it when like I don't win a single line. You know, that's always it's always a good feeling. Yeah, I don't know if I have voted for a winning candidate before. <laughs> <laughs> You got a good track record. <laughs> if you vote for yourself and you win, like that's even, I mean, that makes up for all of it, I think. It, it would. It would. Yeah. See, the math is just a little iffy on me winning. Um, just calculating in my head, I would need about uh, 100,000, a little over 100,000 votes to um, secure the victory. It's not not really looking like, like that's going to happen, yeah. but, you know, 
I, we can be surprised. We, we never know. I think he'll finish in the top three. <laughs> yeah, I, I just want my name to show up on the results. Like, I yeah, oh, yeah, that'll be cool. <laughs> yeah. Evan, how many listeners do you think we've got in Polk County? <laughs> I have no idea. I don't look at the numbers. You look at the numbers. I don't care about uh, the numbers. I bet we got double digits over there. You probably hey. get you like maybe like 20, 25 votes. <laughs> <laughs> I've been told every vote counts, so that should you know that should help you out. But you you uh, you caucus for Bernie, so you're you're a fan of the guy who is you know n- not a Democrat really. So I, I'm wondering, you know, we're talking about whether we're really going to see any success, like trying to have influence over the Democratic Party, whether we should really bother operating within their structures. I think I don't know if we look at like bernie's early political career is that something to be emulated do you think we could make something like that work in iowa maybe like in some small town here <laughs> like run, run for mayor des moines or, yeah, or, sure. or a smaller, smaller <laughs> town i mean i feel like des moines is probably not that much bigger than burlington honestly no i don't think so. yeah probably pretty close uh, i mean uh, maybe i could see i feel like i could possibly see an independent you know winning statewide office in iowa just because iowans love to like you know say that they're they're a purple state where swing voters you know we can go either way there's a bunch of people who will you know split tickets and i and stuff like that so yeah i mean i could possibly see it but i it would take a it would take a lot of convincing i think um the problem, I, I think, I mean, the problem with a lot of the the Bernie type policies and the the left wing stuff is that like the Republicans, I think, have just done such a good job of 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 just making it sound so terrible to to people in rural rural America, people in in rural Iowa, are just like so convinced that like the Green New Deal is gonna take away their cows and it's gonna you know destroy their lives. I don't. Yeah, that Republicans are just so much better at at demonizing like good policy than Democrats are at at selling good policy. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's where the money is is in demonizing, you know, good environmental reforms, good health care. I mean, there's pretty big industries that are heavily invested in keeping things the way they are now. So I guess how how could we possibly counter that with the rural communities? Like, how do we fight back against that? I'm looking for a definitive answer. Yeah, I, I <laughs> you know. you have to tell us how. <laughs> I mean, I think if the federal government actually put money into those communities to actually like build something there and you know provide like opportunities to people, like because a lot of I mean those rural Iowa is pretty depressing if you spend any time there. <laughs> to be honest, I mean we, we love like I understand like liking that type of life, but you know yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I think people could be convinced, like you said, if if the government actually like put its money where its mouth mouth is and like actually did start to improve people's lives. The only like the roadblock that I that I run into where I'm like, is it are, is rural Iowa redeemable? Is the racism? I just mm-hmm. I just don't know if 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 the racism in rural Iowa can be cured. Um, I don't know like what kind of what kind of political strategy you would have to do to like make rural I would not be like xenophobic and right. And, and well, not, it's like, it's like self-selecting because it's the people. It's like the white flight shit where people like move out to these rural areas because of that's the kind of beliefs racist. that they yeah. have. You know, like yeah. they don't like being in an urban environment where they might see people who are different than them. Like it's fucked. Like uh, yeah, I don't know if there's a solution there. Yeah, but like that's that's where like you know have the the immigrant population is is going in Iowa or some of these rural towns where it's just you know extremely racist or it was before because they had their nice little white bubble and now there's you know a, a whole community of people who they demonize and who they've been you know taught to to think are criminals or or stealing um, stealing government resources from them it, it's hard to talk about like r- like making rural like rural Iowa without like sounding like a dick i don't i don't know right, right. <laughs> like you don't want to be like oh they just they just need to get educated they need to you know what i mean because like you don't want to that never works is when when you shame them and just call them uneducated and right. and and just write them off but i'm something someone like bernie i think could 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 have done it you know bernie had that unique ability i think to kind of to reach out to to voters who are in rural areas or, or white voters who you know wouldn't normally vote democratic but are you know on board because of you know the strong labor stances or 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 other reasons they don't understand that they're really in the same boat like economically as a lot of the people that they like hate you know like yeah that's that's really the message to push there and and a guy like bernie he's like uniquely 
like his rhetorical style, he's like very good at just speaking to people and telling them the truth and not being condescending about it and making right. the like class divisions a little bit more obvious and palatable, I guess, to people who aren't accustomed to thinking that way. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So I guess the answer is to organize around class solidarity would be the best bet probably is, is to, to shift the focus of, of, of the demonization from like the immigrant population and, and black people and, and, and people in the inner city and shift that, that focus to the 1%, the people who are really screwing you over, you know, the billionaires in this country who, who are actually controlling all of the wealth and who are actually like the reason why you don't have shit. I mean, yeah. I think that's a message that definitely resonates. I mean, it's it's gen- very generational too, you know. Like, I think even in rural communities, it's like younger folks have a different sort of perspective on things. Mar- marginally, but you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you brought up, uh, you know, racism in particular in rural areas. Um, this is something I saw you tweet about earlier. Uh, there's a hashtag Black Emergency Iowa. It's been going on, uh, and Black Iowa News is a relatively new uh, Twitter account that's sort of highlighting this stuff. Uh, so what what is the state of emergency for Black Iowans? Yeah, no, I'm glad you asked me about that because we, we did just have a press conference over that uh, yesterday. Um, so this is something that has been in the works for a couple weeks now. Um, me and me and Matt Bruce first started working working on this. Matt Bruce, a fellow organizer with Des Moines BLM, I'm sure folks yeah. probably know who he is more than speaking me. Of, uh, <laughs> speaking of multiple arrests. <laughs> yeah. He's a, That's somebody who's been targeted several times. Jesus. Yeah. Um, so yeah, me and Matt Bruce had started to talk about this. It actually, um, the idea kind of came out of the wake of the the lynching of Michael Williams in Grinnell, Iowa. Um, if, if folks are familiar, it was Michael Williams, a black man who was murdered and then his body was burnt in rural Iowa, um, just outside Grinnell. Yeah. 45 minutes from Des Moines. Yeah. Grinnell, which is like, you know, thought of as sort of like a progressive oasis in that area. It's because it's got this nice college. It's like, this is where the, the nice people live. <laughs> Yeah, just just on college <laughs> campus, I guess. But, um, yeah, yeah. So so he was he was lynched. It, it was a, a lynching here in Iowa. You know, all all of the reports that came out of it were were saying that he had maybe was was having an affair with with a girl or the, a woman was having an affair um, like with Michael Williams. Um, so she was cheating on her husband or her boyfriend, and, and he found out about it. Um, and he was the one that that killed him. You know, that's a, that's a that's a lynching when yeah. you're you're taking this upon yourself to to go out and, and kill someone. Um, you know, when you're in rural Iowa and and you have a group, it was it wasn't just one person too. This was a it was a group of people um you know the one person killed him but it was a group of people who assisted in 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 disposing of his body and burning it that's that's a lynching and and that is something that needs to be talked about here in iowa that that is absolutely not okay and the response from the grinnell police department afterwards um they they had a press conference where they said um you know this was absolutely not racially motivated and 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 the 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 evidence that they used was that he had known the person who killed him Right. Which I'm, that's that's not enough for me to, to accept that, um, you know, you can you can sure as hell be racist and know black people, you know, you yeah, can absolutely. The same social circle as black people and still be racist. I, I would I would wager to guess that every black person knows a racist person like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I know quite a few. I would say so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so so and then also the the NAACP they had at the press conference Betty Andrews, um, the the president of the Iowa Nebraska chapter of the NAACP, who then um, spoke after the Grinnell Police Department and just essentially backed up everything that they were saying, um, saying that this was not racially motivated, um, not calling it lynching, not calling for for more investigation of the of the incident. So it was a huge disappointment um, from from me and every everyone who who I know that cares about the situation and who was upset about the situation. It was not not the response that we felt was warranted for for how despicable the crime was. Yeah, so we got together with some some other community organizations, um, some other black leaders, and decided that, you know, we needed to call attention to not only this incident that that happened recently with Michael Williams. We we decided to to form a, a coalition and and worked on some language that we wanted to present. And, and had a press conference of it because we felt that, you know, this was this was so important. We needed to raise attention to it. And it wasn't just the 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 killing of Michael Williams, the lynching of Michael Williams that, that drew us to this point. It was a culmination of things that have happened throughout 2020, right. specifically to black people in Des Moines, too. Yeah. 
We're, we're talking about the, the lynching of Michael Williams. We're talking about um, the disappearance and murder of Abdi Sharif, which was never properly investigated by the Des Moines Police Department. A young black teenager here in Des Moines that went missing for months and they found his body in the river. Um, right. we're, we're talking about Darquan Jones, uh, a young black man who was assaulted here on the south side of Des Moines, called the N-word, called racial slurs. He, they tried to throw his body in the creek. He barely got away. We're talking about Stephanie Hinton, a black woman on the east side of Des Moines who was assaulted a couple months ago, um, also called racial slurs, pulled out of her car. Um, Makeda Scott in Iowa City, mm-hmm. the, the the young black woman who 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 died, and you know that was never properly investigated by police. It, and and the list goes goes on and on. And and oh, I'm so sorry, I cannot forget Breja Terrell, the disappearance of Breja Terrell in the Quad Cities, and and she still has not yet been located. So we're talking about disappearance of young black children we're talking about violence against black people just for being black we're talking about murders lynchings happening here in iowa all of this and then on top of all this violence we're talking about covid19 and the disproportionate effect it's had against black islands you know just black right. islands have been disproportionately uh, uh infected and and died disproportionate at disproportionate rates because of covid19 and then the subsequent economic fallout from that black People are at much higher risk of eviction. They're at much higher risk of being laid off from their jobs. They're essential workers. All of this culminating into one. Also, you know, the response from police to, to racial justice protests throughout the summer, the violence that we've experienced from police officers, um, the derecho that, that hit Cedar Rapids and the African refugee community that was um, that was just devastated there. I, I went mm-hmm. out there a couple times to try to help them out. Um, their entire apartment complexes were just destroyed, roofs ripped off, folks I went out there a week after the derecho hit and there was still a, a whole community of African refugees who were sleeping in tents in the parking lot. Yeah. And, and so like where the government did not step in to, to help these people. And, and it, yeah, so it's just a, a culmination of so many things that, that are all have, that have all happened in 2020, all affecting black Iowans. We just felt it was imperative that we declare a state of emergency, just like in, in any other situation where the government might declare a state of emergency to, to draw attention, to draw resources to, to this issue. We need attention and we need resources. We need government resources. We need people to step up and, and help out black Iowans because we're struggling. Black Iowans don't feel safe um, walking down the street, black Iowans. They, they need help and we need the government to step up and, and, and assist us. And so that's why we, we declared a state of emergency. We're going to, we're going to keep up with that. We also put out some, some helpful calls to action, um, some safety tips for black Iowans, just because of the, the racist violence that I've described, um, you know, a call to action for, for black Iowans to, to get more civically engaged with some of these black organizations um, to, to take direct action, um, just, just to, to raise their consciousness around what's happening in Iowa and kind of start to, to speak up and, and, and we're going to keep it up. Um, yeah. Hashtag black emergency IA is, is what we're using. We're trying to raise awareness and, and, and make some change happen because right now what we're seeing is, is black Iowans struggling and, and black Iowans being victimized and, and people aren't stepping up to, to help the way they should. Yeah. I'll link the, uh, the press release, I guess, when I upload this episode so I can, you know, put more eyes on that. Absolutely. I think it's good that, that you guys kind of, you know, put all of this together and it's like, I mean, people see this stuff happening, but they maybe don't connect it in the larger picture. Like all of these things are happening at the same time. They're all related. This is like a trend. This is an issue that can like we can do something to stop it. Yeah, it's close to home. Yeah, no, and yeah, and yeah. With that, that we're also recognizing Iowa as a sundown town. Um, if yeah. folks know about the the racist violence of sundown towns, and uh, because all of the the racist violence that I mentioned that happened in 2020 against Black Iowans all happened after the sun went down after, after nighttime. Yeah, um, right. And, and there are parts of Iowa. There's a there's a website that has sundown t- like known sundown towns listed um, in the United States, and there's quite a few of them here in Iowa. Yep. Yeah, and that's that's true. Also, what you said, Evan, that this is close to home, and it seems like a lot of at least the impression that I get from a lot of people that live here in Iowa around us, like we're kind of, I don't know. We think that the bad stuff doesn't happen here. It happens far away. Like this is, this is a nice calm area. Sleepy old Iowa. Yeah. 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 That's, I mean, that's the argument that they try to make with the police and they say, Oh, Mm -hmm. this isn't Minneapolis. This isn't New York city. Like the police are good here. Right. And I'm like, well, they just had to release a video today of them assaulting a black person who was doing nothing wrong. Um, So many lawsuits out against DMPD. Um, The Polk County sheriffs want to once again, talk about Kevin Schneider, the Polk County sheriff. I didn't mention this earlier, but in 2018, 
one of his officers shot someone in the back and killed them. Um, and that body cam footage was covered up. It was not released as it was as it should have. This happened in 2018. They just released the body cam footage last month because they lost a court battle, an 18 month court battle. The people of Polk County, us taxpayers, had to pay $120,000 to cover those legal fees because Kevin Schneider didn't want to be accountable and share the footage from the body cam of one of his officers murdering somebody. Jeez. It's absurd. The amount of like money they've spent on just covering up shit and the lawsuits involved, it's just like it could be Yeah, what's what's so the point much of better. having body cams? What's the point of having yeah. body cams if we're not gonna see any body cam footage until two years later after you lose a court battle and we have to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for your legal fees? That's yeah. <laughs> that's why we were talking about defunding. These these body cam reforms aren't aren't stopping this shit from happening. Yeah, and we already like tax money pays for the cameras it pays the salaries of the officers it pays for the storage of the video from the cameras already (laughs) and then we have to pay them like an extortion fee to ever actually see the evidence right the weird thing about the des moines police department body cams is they didn't actually pay for those um they were provided by a private a private donor a private company that's the only reason they got body cams in the first place because someone else bought them for them Mm -hmm. Hmm. well someone's benefiting obviously (laughs) yeah dana winger benefits off prison industries yeah yeah. Well, to uh, to close things out, I'm going to reiterate your platform for your sheriff campaign. Jalen Cavill wants to decriminalize all drugs, end cash bail, end all collaboration with ICE, and defund the Polk County Sheriff's Department. Uh, Evan, I want to make sure this is a unanimous decision between the two of us. So I would move that Rock Hard Caucus officially endorse Jalen Cavill's... Oh. Biden campaign. I think I already endorsed him. Okay, but that was a personal endorsement. Well, should we? Yeah, yeah. Endorse yeah. him as an organization. Yeah, I'll speak on behalf of Chuck and Natalie. All right, great. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Jalen, our our co-host Chuck sends his regards. He's very sorry he couldn't make it tonight. Hey, Chuck. Hope we all <laughs> we'll chat next time. <laughs> yeah, we'll make it happen again. Yeah. So I, I think that's official then. <laughs> I appreciate the endorsement. I'm honored to receive the endorsement of the Rock Hard Caucus. I, it means a lot for me. Some of these endorsements I've had to disavow. Like when the- <laughs> <laughs> this endorsement, I'm proud of. <laughs> well, I'm super like thrilled that you accept our endorsement, and I'm I'm proud to endorse Jalen Cavill's writing campaign for sheriff. And I hope that anyone who's listening to this, who's in Polk County, does the same. So, Jalen, thanks for joining us tonight on the Rock Hard Caucus podcast. Uh, I wish you the best of luck in your campaign. Oh, I have a question. I have the uh, South yeah. Side Register here. Do you know the people who, the vandals who damaged the High Trestle Trail by Ankeny? There's a couple people who apparently drove a bike and walked on some wet cement and also put Z Loves K on the wet cement. And so they're saying it's like $75,000 to, to fix it. So I'm just wondering, do you know who did that? I do not know who did that. I do, <laughs> I do, I did see the story about it. I will say the High Trestle Trail Bridge is dope. I've been there. Um, there's dope lights. I'm sorry to hear that happened, but <laughs> I do not know anything about it. <laughs> okay, that might win you some votes. So I was just trying to. <laughs> is that even in Polk County? I think that's Dallas it's, County. Isn't it? Uh, it might be. It's Ankeny. I'm not sure, but I don't know why it's in the South Side Register. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. what the fuck? It's like the first the front of it too i just got that in the mail today what the fuck real important news <laughs> so before you defund before you defund the department could you take care of whatever happened on the bridge and then <laughs> I'll, I'll look at it. <laughs> all right all right thank you all right well that'll do it for us tonight thanks again jalen for joining us this has been uh, a fantastic interview you're you're a wonderful interview subject and god willing in a couple weeks you'll be the the sheriff elect of Polk County, Iowa. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, this was great. Hell yeah. Cheers. Yeah, justice over jails. Hashtag share it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not the kind to care what kind of clothes I wear. If I have a new sombrero on my head. But if my head's undressed, I'm never at my bed. I feel as if I should have stayed there. See, the boots of mine maybe need to shine, but there's nothing wrong with that. I can ride on by with my head held high, got a new ten gallon hat. Though my pants are worn and my shirt is torn, I'll go right on standing pat. 